<laughs> Do you hear me well? Yes, I can. Yeah, great. We, we, I would like to ask you from the beginning, if if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, how how is now the situation in New York? The streets certainly are empty. Empty. There's a the new Rolling Stones song is called Ghost Town, <laughs> and that's what it, it it's perfectly describing uh, what everyone is feeling there, uh, and and that there's a, a kind of rough feeling on the street, um, especially people are saying, people on, on bicycles and, uh, and people jogging. They don't, it, it's like they're very aggressive now and they, they aren't wearing masks, which they're supposed to. Uh, and so it's a, it's a more uncomfortable feeling, people are saying, but in terms of, the statistics, I, w I would say that um, that has improved. Uh, and, you know, I, I have to say that in, in, for a while, you know, the governor and the mayor uh, in New York were not getting along <laughs> very well. Yeah. Was, I don't know if that filters through to Europe too, but, um, but it seems like they've been have no choice but to start to cooperate now. And um, I want, but but the governor, I have to say, has been very reassuring in the sense that uh, he's really following the statistics, and and uh, the, the the state is staying shut down until the be middle of of this month, and then he's going to decide perhaps to loosen things in parts of the. Uh, of the state, but it's very unlikely that will happen in New York City. I think that, that it's going to be required that uh, people continue to try to stay at home, maybe with very li limited uh, opening up of certain uh, things. But um, the statistics at least are pointing towards some control, but clearly not uh, enough to say uh, the way some of the states in our country are are doing well everything's back to normal though don't worry uh, uh, clearly a lot of people are are dying uh, and also the the rate of hospitalization uh, uh, there's still the new cases entering the hospital has not decreased as well as you would hope but certainly things are better in this city because the danger was that the, the, the healthcare system uh, and I could talk about that for a long time. <laughs> What's wrong with our healthcare system? It shouldn't even be called a system. Uh, but the, what's wrong with it is really magnified in these conditions. And and uh, the real danger was that they would be overloaded, not able to handle things. Um, and and it seems like that risk has passed as long as we continue on the path that we're that we're uh, on. My, my question is, I read that um, in New York, it was so strong, the, the situation, or the, 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 there were so many people dying because of the health system for the Latin uh, population huh. or so on. Is, is it like this? Yes, um, you, you know, that in fact, I'd say in New York, uh, it might not be, as bad as in some other parts of the country, but yes, that you know that that was a statistic that started to show up a few weeks ago that there was a disparity uh, uh, in 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 African American and and Latinos. Latinos are about a quarter of our city, uh, and and um, you know that that should not have come as a surprise to anyone. Uh, th those disparities were already existing. The, those people are still already getting poor health care for a long time. Uh, uh, and, and, um, and so, yes, that's, that's true. There are more people um, uh, who are, you know, black and, and Latino who are, 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 are dying from the coronavirus. Uh, there's no question. And, and, uh, that's that certainly is continuing. That you know, it's being looked into at least. And there's, uh, I I don't think that you. I think to start with, you have to make healthcare accessible to everyone equally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and and that's part of the problem that this happened before, and that wasn't true. 
and and you have to have less income inequality when when people are poor they're not going to when they worry about getting food the next day they're not going to worry about keeping uh their health in in good shape uh they want to stay alive is the first priority and and so you know in the homeless uh, problem in new york has been there for a long time and you know in, in certainly in if you talk about the jail system uh you know i always quote you know there was a i don't know if you call him a comedian but yes richard pryor mm -hmm. he he was arrested once and he he was a black guy and he said uh well when i went into the jail i expected to find justice and i did i found just us <laughs> <laughs> so, and it was true you know in my experience almost everybody was black or latino in in uh in Rikers Island. as you worked for the union of the doctors because there was a headlight that was very emotional from a doctor who took young doctor who took suicide now no um, oh yeah so um, I'm not sure the health system. Why do you think could this happen? And also, uh, why were not enough uh, respirators, uh, intensive beds? How was New York not prepared for such a of crisis? Of course not. They were not prepared for anything like this. In fact, uh, a thing that hasn't been mentioned. Maybe I'm missing something. I'm no expert about this. But I know for a fact the pressure has been on the hospitals for a long time to not have empty beds to to make sure because Medicare would pay them or Medicaid it would be Medicaid would pay them a certain amount of money uh, and they would deduct money if they had beds that weren't being used. Medicaid didn't want to pay for what they thought was unnecessary. But in fact, we know now it is necessary to have empty beds in case something like this happens. But yeah, there was no preparation. Uh, and some of this is, to, is the fault of the federal government. Um, but some of it's also, uh, I think the probably the most, the biggest reason in New York City was funding, was the amount of money. The city hospitals are always on the verge of, of not having enough money and so they have to make this pressure to cut things back so they're not going to have extra of anything you know if they're worried about uh just getting by each day they can't have uh something they're, they're keeping in reserve for a year from now so that's the reason it's economics that stopped uh the city from being more prepared and then it goes back to what's wrong with our health system you know it's it's all ruled by uh by uh profit it's it's a health care is a commodity it should be something available like in most civilized uh countries in the world uh, uh something that everyone is entitled to and uh, you shouldn't have to worry about how much it costs that's you don't choose to get sick uh you choose to buy a tv i always say <laughs> maybe a bigger one or a smaller one so let that be capitalism, you know, <laughs> fine. But not, you don't choose to live or die or get sick or not. Every, and sooner or later, that happens to every last person. So that's something that the whole society should take care of. And that's the fundamentally why, uh, you know, why there's, there's no preparation here. Plus the system is very fragmented. Um, one of the things the governor did now he made the private hospitals work with the public hospitals to sort of share their resources. Mm -hmm. He forced to act as a whole system together. Before, that's that's something they never did. Uh, you know, and in fact, um, the private hospitals, they'd say, oh, that person looks really sick. It's going to cost us a lot of money. We'll send them to the public hospitals. We'll say there's not enough room. You know that kind of thing would go go on uh cost shifting like that so they're all looking to make as much money as they could and and they're competing with each other the hospitals were acting like little empires you know um so that that's 
there's, certainly, there's no preparation for anything like this. Uh, there was a there was a big. Um, you say that the governor didn't get along very well with the major, but as I think the governor has a very big trouble also with Trump, with President Trump. How was it? Because I heard something from the Mountie and the King. How, how was this? Yes, yes. Yeah, there, it, it was very encouraging to hear that. Uh, in that, you know, the, the government now is passing bills to, to try to help people through this, uh, this crisis. And there so far has been no money uh, directly allotted to uh, to the state governments, and and second, that would also mean to local governments, and those, are, as Cuomo has pointed out, those are that's where the police and the fire department and the teachers and the healthcare workers who are paid by the the government, uh, that's where the m money is needed, and there's a terrible shortfall now in in tax revenue. Uh, and I, I must say that some uh, leftists here are criticizing him. He's saying, wow, a beautiful bird just appeared. <laughs> a cardinal. Uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to it as a city person. You know. So the, the, the um, you know, the, some leftists are criticizing him, saying this is really a chance for him to raise taxes on rich people to balance the budget. Uh, I don't actually agree with that. I think what he's trying to do is to make the federal government live up to its obligations and, and, and help the, the states in, with their financial problems. Uh, if no one's working, they're not getting taxes. And so the, the states are in. Uh, so uh, you know, he's trying to squeeze the federal government into doing that. But he, he was um, also really, uh, uh, you know, he's walking a fine line. He, he, he wants to, you know, he wants to criticize Trump uh, as more than he's doing. He, he, he tries to praise him uh, whenever he has the opportunity because he knows he, he will be spurned uh, if he's not careful. Because there were some he headlines now, for example, that uh, the, the, the government, he, he allowed now the emergency of the experimental antiviral drug Remdesivir. To, right. You know, as, a, as a doctor, do you think it's a good thing? This, or? Well, yeah, I can comment on that. The, you know, the, I have to say it's disturbing to see the way, and I understand that people want some good news uh, from the medical world. Uh, but normally, like that, there was one study now that was a control study, an earlier study, uh, which is about a week before, was not a controlled study. You know, in other words, there was, you know what that is. So um, the, the authors actually pointed out, you know, it showed maybe it could be helping, but and there was a list of maybe 10 things wrong that you shouldn't draw conclusions from their own study. And normally a study like this would not get a great deal of attention in, in medical uh, journals. Um, one small study on an important issue isn't a way to make decisions. So I think it's, it's a bit too publicized. The study seemed to be reasonably good and it showed a little effect. We're talking about a drug that's intravenous, uh, intravenously ad administered, probably expensive. I haven't heard how much, but, but I did see Trump uh, with the head of the company there, right alongside him, who, who's very happy to make a lot of money if his drug uh, mm -hmm. starts being used more. Um, I, you know, there's two sides to it. It showed only a few days of sooner improvement, uh, the effect of the drug. Um, and normally, you know, that, is that really important? But in, in this, it seems like the illness, after about a week or 10 days, people can seem to be getting better and all of a sudden they'll get worse. So maybe that two or three days earlier could be helpful to people. So I, I, 
I think it, it, it shows some promise, but people shouldn't jump on, uh, uh, on this as, as going to be a panacea. It's you know, too, getting too much attention. Uh, uh, it, it, the precautions people can take are much more effective. Uh, they're the best weapon we have now is people not transmitting it from one person to the next. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I think it's, I wish, you know, that when Trump is up there with, uh, I mean, I stopped watching that. Uh, he was putting on a, a show every day uh, for a while. I, I just stopped watching it because, first of all, he would stop talking about the, the, the COVID after a while and just talk about him and his random thoughts. Uh, uh, but, but also, the, you know, the, the two doctors up there, Burks, there's a woman who has, she has a new Hermes scarf every day, it seems. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and she seems to be wanting to make excuses for him, no matter what, for Trump, no matter what he says. Um, and and um, so the other guy, Fauci, I, I, I am, I, he at least is speaking as, as a, from as like a scientific way of thinking. But he he also I think is is not he's not being strong enough in in criticizing the president. At a certain point, you can't you know when the president was telling people to 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 drink bleach and uh, put ultraviolet in, inside their body, like uh, I don't know what even he thinks <laughs> that the body is made. Uh, you know that would be a point. If I was Anthony Fauci, uh, I would say that's enough. I'm not going to be associated with this crazy person anymore. I will be able to speak in public to uh, people and get my ideas across. That's what I would have done. I think at a certain point, you have to draw the line. Uh, and he's not doing that. He's staying there among them. And I guess he's trying to do the best he can, but it's disappointing to me. We need, that's who should be there. Trump should not be involved. The, the medical people should be. Uh, making the, the decisions, not the politicians, you know. What do you think about uh, what Trump says? Uh, I was really um, astonished that uh, the virus is coming from a laboratory of Wuhan. And yeah, I, sort of, yeah. I think the, um, the Secret Service said it's not like this. What, what okay. do you think as a doctor? Oh, no. It, it, the evidence is that that's not true. Uh, it's very unlikely that that is true. That it's a conspiracy theory that Trump, she, he loves to find these, the, the crazy right wing people are coming up with these conspiracy theories all the time, uh, looking for a scapegoat. You know, he was calling it the China virus. It's, uh, it's, it's a complete, <laughs> the opposite of the way we should be dealing with this. I mean, this is a, a worldwide problem. If, if anything could finally make nations cooperate with each other and, and, and work together, uh, it should be a thing like this situation. And that's not happening, especially not happening because of Trump and his, his cronies. Uh, it's, it's really terrible. I mean, it, things are bad enough without, <laughs> without this situation. It's really disappointing to me. I, I think uh, that's something that really could unify. I mean, it should be, the World Health Organization is connected to the United Nations. That should be where the focus is uh, of support. Instead, Trump wants to take, he wants to punish them because he thought, I don't know, they, they didn't do as good a job. Uh, that's, it's, it's what should be supported now, or world institutions. Uh, instead, he wants to build a wall around our country uh, and pretend the rest of the world doesn't exist. It's very, very uh, discouraging, but I'm rambling now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. I, I would like to know something about the, the prisons because you look like, yeah. look like a doctor like this. So um, what challenges do you think will they, are, are they having just now in, the, in this moment with COVID? Right. Well, it's, it's um, especially bad in the worst place is uh, Cook County, where Chicago is in Illinois. Uh, that is the worst. 
but the federal prison system uh, is very heavily hit. I do know on Rikers Island, um, there, you know, it, well, f to, to step back, the, the prison is a perfect incubator for any infectious disease. The people are all, all close to each other, um, and there's poor ventilation, there's poor sanitation, and the, the thing about it is, I mean, I think about those guys uh, all the time. They don't have a choice about it, and they know there's a risk of something that could kill them uh, that's there, and they don't have, maybe they wouldn't want to take protections. They wouldn't want to stay six feet away. Maybe they wouldn't, but I think most of them would, but they don't have, no one there has a choice, including the staff, including the guards. Mm. And at Rikers Island, so, you know, in Rikers Island, there are now, I think they've got the population under 4,000 uh, people. And there are now, I believe, about 400 cases among the inmates and a little bit more than that among the correction officers, the guards, I'll call them. They hate uh. being called guards, but uh. that's what I always think of them <laughs> as. So, <laughs> And and so it's much, much higher rate of infection in Rikers Island than in the rest of New York City. And New York City is way higher than uh. maybe the rest of the country or, or has been. So it's a very big problem. I think only, I shouldn't say only, but only one or a, a small number of people have died so far uh, in, in Rikers Island from the, the virus, which is, which is good. But the, the chance of it, uh, that's certainly not under control, that situation. And um, because you have several people in the cell, no? Yeah. Living well, as well. Okay. And it, it, At Rikers Island, they have what are called dormitories in some places where the inmates are sleeping two feet apart from each other. Uh, and what they've done is they should sleep with the head on one end and the feet on the other end of the bed as a precaution mm -hmm. and they they eat right next to each other they're in a yard if they're allowed to go outside they're all next to each other and meanwhile the guards they change a shift every 12 hours and the guards are coming in and out every single day from new mm -hmm. york city where there's plenty of virus and and they're going in there and bringing the virus in uh, and they are at great at great risk also, and so what I mean it goes it's like the the disparities. But do they, they have masks or gloves or things like this? Hygiene feel? I don't think that, that inmates have that. I think that the the guards are some, are are requesting that and they have access to it, which is important because I think that's where I mean clearly. If the inmates are all stuck in there, they're the ones not bringing it in. Uh, so there is there is some precautions like that. Uh, I think, you know, it, it's like the other disparities that are the, the trouble with the healthcare system in general. The pre-existing is being shown up and revealed much more now. The same thing's true with with our jail system. Uh, and, and it's probably true, it's in Chicago and the rest of the country too, too. but in, in, just to put it in perspective, my, when I started working there in 1973, there were, during the early years, there were 19,000 people uh, in the New York City system. That's bigger than a lot of countries uh, have uh, people incarcerated. The U.S. still leads a, a world of 2.3, I think, million people. Uh, and the, the problem with the this, this, this so-called system, the people on, on Rikers Island, 80% of them all along have been people who are not convicted of any crime. That's the difference between a prison and a jail. It's something that ah, people think about. I don't about. know. No. Right, a, j a jail is where you're convicted of a crime and you're serving your sentence. The prison, it's like in a, in a small town, they would call it a lockup. 
They just arrest people, right? And they're charged with something. And in, in New York, those 80% on Rikers Island, in, in New York City system, and I call it a jail system mostly, 20% they're serving long, short, short sentences, maybe a year or less, or minor crimes. Otherwise, they would go into the state system. So even those people, you could argue, should they really, is it so great to keep them in jail for a year at a great expense? Maybe we could help them become, uh, uh -huh. have a better life and a better life for a society. But the other 80%, those people just can't make bail. And uh, that means, you know, they have to go someplace and they have to give whatever amount of money the judge says for them to be able to be out while their case is being decided. And that kind of system has been so destructive. Uh, it, it, it means, so what, that selects automatically that 80% that of people are poorer people. Mm. If you have more money, you get bail and you're out. And you can see your lawyer every day, right? If you're on Rikers Island, the lawyer has to, and I, you know, I could talk about this for a long time, it's a big deal to get to Rikers Island and see a person. It, it's, it's a long, it's a very difficult process to visit if you're a family member. Uh, but if you're the lawyer, there's, there's a group of lawyers called the Legal Aid Society in New York that are contracted with the city. They provide the lawyers for people who can't afford them themselves. And they're good people, they're good lawyers, but they have dozens of cases each, and they can't do the job they, they want to be able to do. Uh, so that's a, that's a problem right there. So the system, and there aren't enough judges, there aren't enough courts. The system uh, results in, I think, it, I don't know this statistic, uh, don't mm -hmm. quote me, but it's something like 90% of the cases are decided by plea bargaining. Plea bargaining is the, the lawyer says, oh, the guy's charged with robbing a bank. Uh, maybe you could reduce the charge to uh, breaking an enter, some lesser charge. And he pleads guilty to that and he, he serves a shorter sentence or maybe he gets out of jail now and but he's on probation. Harold, one, one question. There, there are prisoners that are uh, they're not prison. You said yeah. jail, no prison. No, no? it is yeah. a prison. Okay. Yeah. That they, they should uh, that that they leave, uh, relieve people or not? I, I suppose there are uh, prisons that that relieve now with covered people, so they they are not stuck in the prison. Or well, not. that is. I'm, I'm, it's a long way around that I'm getting to. That <laughs> is the way to make this problem in the prisons and jail not so bad, is to get people out of there who shouldn't be there. Get them out to some place, you know, it's not like the city itself is safe necessarily, but it's a lot safer. It's something like 10 times the rate uh, in Rikers Island is in the rest of the city. So you, you suppose that in Rikers Island, there are a lot of people, um, that they could release if you if they, if they want, no? Yes. So uh, why don't do it? Uh, why, why why do you think that they don't do it? Well, the there would be in fact more uh, people already released according to the law that they recently passed. Um, but people, the, it's public pressure. There are people who are afraid that. I mean, it's supposed to be the principle you're innocent until proven guilty. So, but if if you're a, a, a white person that has a little bit of racism in you, uh, and you know those are black guys that have been arrested for something, oh, they're going to let them out into my community. That's scary to me. Um, you know, there's there's public pressure that has stopped more people from being released. It's up to um, 
I think the district attorney, that's uh, a person in each borough that has power over that, uh, that's the person that charges people with the crimes. Um, and the, the people who uh, are, are charged with a nonviolent uh, crime, they're, they're, they shouldn't be there. There's no reason for it. Well, and, what, yeah. you, one question is like in the prisons in itself, just to know uh, if they get ill, so, so you, they're in the dormitory together and eating together and also, so when they get ill, do they have some facilities of uh, having them in, or do they, to what hospitals do they go when they get in? If you right. have a COVID patient in the, the prison, where, where, what do you do with him? Yeah, on Rikers Island, there are, I don't know, maybe 10 different jail physical buildings. And some of them have what's called the infirmary. And there is one building that's just for health care. Uh, there's a place where actually where I used to work that was used when tuberculosis was acting up in New York in the 1990s. They had temporary, temporary buildings where they're like big tents made of metal were built to house people just to isolate people with active tuberculosis. Uh, I was still working there 10 years ago, so they, they weren't temporary, and they're still there. They use them to isolate people. So there are facilities if, if and, and the healthcare people, uh, and, and each, each facility has a clinic where someone gives a note to the correction officer, I'm feeling sick, or I want to see the doctor for something, or the doctor gave an appointment to come back. Then the correction officer, if he or she feels like it, and they don't always feel like it, they'll bring the person to the clinic or else they'll take their time and uh, it'll be too late by the time the person gets there. Or they don't, they say, oh, you don't want to go today. Here, sign a refusal. Uh, they'll, they'll talk the person out of it. It's even that. And if, if there's a list of people supposed to be seen in the clinic, Half of them never get there because the correction officers sort of make a barrier. So that must be a very chaotic situation just now. Yes. yes. And so there is a certain amount of care, a certain level. If you get sick enough, they'll put you in the infirmary, it's called. That's not like a hospital, don't get me wrong, but it's a better level of care for someone who's sick, clearly sick and can't go back to their cell. Uh, if you get sicker than that, you have to get sent to the city hospital. And there's just two of the hospitals that take the, the inmates from the jail system. Uh, Bellevue Hospital, where I work, and uh, Kings County Hospital, that's Brooklyn. Bellevue Hospital is, is the oldest one, it's from 1840, the oldest hospital in the city in Manhattan. Uh, and there's actually a prison ward in that hospital. And the system was so, you know, people ask me about my work there. Were you ever scared? There were maybe three times in 35 years I was scared. But was it difficult? The most difficult thing was the frustration of the bureaucracy. Do you think that the people learn of, of, of this crisis? They were what? That they will learn uh, of ah. this crisis? <laughs> or do you see, is my main question is also because I ask but always, do you see something positive or constructive out of this? I, I see that that is possible. I, I'm, I'm an old person now and I have to say I become more pessimistic the older I get. But so that's a big thing for me to say. I do think it's possible that we will learn from this. The, the economic disparities are magnified. We see how, how that's not right. The, the disparities in healthcare, the, the way that system is working, it, it's, not, it's not the way it should be. Uh, and so there is this, and, and because people are having to act differently, 
uh, there is the chance that that'll happen. I certainly think that's possible in, in New York State and New York City. Uh, for the rest of the country, I, I don't feel uh, uh, that, that comfortable saying that. I would say it's possible. Is it likely? No. But like, for example, this thing about the city hospitals, the public hospitals and private hospitals working together, well, it's something, whoa, that never happened before. The governor made that happen. Maybe they should continue to do that, right? Uh, and everyone, may, sooner or later, people can get treatment for certain things and not have to pay. Maybe we should do that for everything, you know? It, it, so, yeah, I hope, I hope something positive can come out of it. It certainly should if we're halfway smart. I'm a little optimistic for that in New York State. I think things could get a little better, um, but they could also get worse. In general, for the world, because it's a global, uh, it's a global uh, problem. So for the world or whatever, you do think there there will be some constructive, positive things of all this? Uh, that is a really good question. I I, not, I think the. The U.S. used to be one of the leaders, one of the countries that that other countries look towards for leadership. That's certainly not the case now. I certainly don't think that. So there's a big void in the world. Uh, there's, you know, it should be that this should be talked about at the United Nations. To my way of thinking, it should be talked about at the level of the World Health Organization. All the countries should be talking with each other and cooperating with each other and working together. It's like, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's enough food to go around. No one should be hungry. There's no excuse for it. Uh, but, but so yeah, it should, it should, you'd think, especially if it gets worse, it could be like the 1918-19 flu, uh, uh, that there's a, a, another spike in the fall it could it could be good in the sense it'll force people to cooperate, but right now I'm not optimistic. I, I see I don't see countries really stepping forward. There are countries. I mean Germany certainly is a leader, uh, uh, and and in in certain ways like South Korea has been a leader. There's countries doing a good job. You know Spain and Italy were pretty good at controlling uh, their epidemic. But are the countries working together? Um, uh, I don't know. I hope. I hope that could happen. I'm. I'm not. Uh, uh, I. I. I want to hope. Put it. I'll put it that way. <laughs> I want to hope that way that could happen. Uh, it's, it would make life ha a happy. The world a happier place to live in, if countries mm -hmm. were helping each other, uh, especially in things like this. This is, a, this, this is, oh, is this a worldwide problem? If there's anything, the country should be together uh, with. It's certainly not going to happen in this country as long as the, the, this crazy person is the president uh, and, and uh, all of the, his cronies support him. So uh, that, that part is d discouraging. Yeah. You know? Thank you very much, Harold. I sub I hope you. I I wish you a good wa wealth, health. No. <laughs> wealth, not health. <laughs> Keep no. healthy, you know. And no. thank you very much for the conversation. Oh, I'm really. I hope it's helping you. Yeah, and, it helped me a lot. It helped good. me a lot. I'm, I'm glad. It's very nice to meet you. And yeah, me too. Keep if, on if, doing what when you when do. you can travel, you come to Spain or to Germany, yeah. I would love to. I really would. <laughs> okay, goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.